A star of comedy and drama, on the big or small screen, and with a talent for music too, is there nothing this man can't do? Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Hugh Laurie moments. I quit. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the finest, funniest, and most memorable moments from the British actor and comic Hugh Laurie. All right, take it away. Number 10, Football School, a bit of Fry and Laurie. We start with Laurie alongside Stephen Fry, playing one half of one of the UK's most celebrated comedy double acts. You have children. You want those children to become Premier League footballers. Well, this is the place for you. This sketch takes a satirical look at the nation's favourite sport, as Laurie's Mr. Wilson teaches aspiring footballers only the most important things about the beautiful game, namely how to dive and get away with it. A lot of height goes like this, OK? <laughs> a joke which still relates to the Premier League today, it also allows Laurie to show off one of his many accurate accents. This makes me sad. <laughs> Number 9, American and British slang, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. When Laurie hit US screens with House, lots of people, including the show's director, thought the actor was American. This interview on Ellen sets the record straight, with Hugh trading slang terms and revealing just how little he knows about American colloquialisms. I know. I don't know. No. Uh, oh, there was... That would be... That was to really show you how wrong you were. There right. was... The pair go back and forth trying to test each other, with neither of them doing very well. Oh, just exhausted. Uh, oh, oh. No. However, we probably prefer Laurie's definitions of the real thing. Means to pass someone on a motorcycle and then see a police car and break <laughs> suddenly. Uh, I don't know. Number 8, Prince George and Dr. Johnson, Black Adder the Third. To some more witty wordplay, but this time Laurie plays the fool. Hugh stars as Prince George throughout the third series of Black Adder, and here he meets dictionary writer Dr. Johnson. For I celebrated last night the encyclopedic implementation of my premeditated orchestration of demotic Anglo Saxon. <laughs> no, didn't catch any of that. However, Johnson's vast vocabulary proves too much for George, leaving Rowan Atkinson's Blackadder to take over the conversation with some well timed nonsense. Well, in that case, sir, I hope you will not object if I also offer the doctor my most enthusiastic. Contrafibularities. George spends the entire season in a state of confusion, but never more so than here. What are you all about, Blackadder? This is all beginning to sound a bit like Dago talk to me. Number seven, a private word, Veep. Veep fans know that Laurie's Tom James and Julia Louis Dreyfus's president Selena Meyer go way back, and their relationship reaches fever pitch in this scene. I think you need help. I need help. Absolutely. Oh, please. I need You've got rest. more issues than National Geographic. What's going on here? Laurie's involvement with season six was a closely guarded secret, but this one on one, which is stacked with sexual tension, proved a pivotal point for the character. Admit it. Admit it. You, don't, Admit you are fing crazy. If you only know Laurie for his comedy roles, then this is prime example of the other side of his acting talents. Number six, the gentleman on the plane, Friends. A cameo role, but a memorable moment, here's when Hugh had his say on the Ross and Rachel story in Friends. Laurie plays the easily annoyed passenger sat next to Rachel during her flight to London to gate crash Ross's wedding. Excuse me. Yeah. If you're planning on doing that throughout the entire flight, please tell me now so that I can take a sedative. Not only is he unimpressed by his fidgety flight partner, but he's also unashamedly anti-Rachel when she tells her story to anyone who will listen. I'm sorry, can I interrupt? Yeah, I just want to say that you are a horrible, horrible person. It's not what she wanted to hear, but Laurie's character continues his run regardless. By the way, it seems to be perfectly clear that you were on a break. <gasps> Number five, Nix's speech, Tomorrowland. Laurie doesn't often play the villain, but he really nailed the bad guy role for this film. To save civilization, I would show its collapse. Okay, so the movie didn't fare that well with critics, but Laurie's final monologue is a standout scene. In it, he explains how he had seen the future downfall of mankind and had tried to warn everyone, but to no avail. The entire world wholeheartedly embraced the apocalypse and sprinted towards it with gleeful abandon. Meanwhile, your earth was crumbling all around you. His speech transcends the movie itself, retaining relevance for the modern world, and it's pretty difficult to disagree with some of his points. We saw the iceberg, we warned the Titanic, that you all just steered for it anyway, full steam ahead. Number four, Lieutenant Georgina gets engaged, Blackadder goes forth. 
We're with Blackadder again and into Series 4, with Laurie playing a soldier in the British Army. But when Blackadder is tasked with organising a variety show, he dresses Lieutenant George as a woman and casts him as the leading lady. I feel fantastic! <laughs> Unfortunately for everyone concerned, General Melchard falls in love with Georgina and proposes to her. Well, thank God the horny old blighter didn't ask you to marry him. <laughs> and to make matters worse, George accepts. It's down to Blackadder to smooth things over, in typically sardonic fashion. I tried to stop her, but before I could say, don't tread on a mine, <laughs> she trod on a mine. Oh, no! Number three, hallucinating Cuddy, House. Hugh's work on House proved a massive turning point in his career, with the actor moving away from previous comedy roles. In this moment, House is trying to escape his long-term prescription drug addiction. No! So, when his boss, the woman he most admires, comes to his apartment to help him stay clean and they end up getting together, things seem to be on the up. However, fast forward to the next episode and the following day, and House eventually realises that he'd hallucinated it all, having succumbed to his addiction once again. No. I'm not okay. Number two, let them talk. Let them talk a celebration of New Orleans blues. Laurie's had a gift for music since he was just six years old, and in 2010, he recorded his first blues album, Let Them Talk. Welcome to New Orleans. Following that record up with his 2011 TV documentary, Hugh shows just how skilled he is. When you see me laughing, laughing just to keep on crying. Taking a look at the New Orleans music scene, Laurie proves a passionate and knowledgeable lover of blues music, producing some moving and memorable performances of his own. It is toe-tapping stuff. Box back shoot on a Stetson hat. Yeah, yeah. Number one, Derek Nipple, a bit of Fry and Laurie. My name is Derek. <laughs> How could we not come back for a little bit more of Fry and Laurie? Choosing one winning sketch is an almost impossible task, and the beautifully written barman scene nearly took today's crown. I don't know why I'm bothered with women. I'd be better off being a fruit. <laughs> but top spot goes to Derek Nipple, and a sketch which quickly descends into absurdity. Yeah, but if you wouldn't mind spelling it for well, me. Well, I mean, can't you? I, mean, I would be very grateful if you would spell it for me. All right, then. N-I-P-P-L hyphen E. From the name to the jig to the slap and the cricket bat, it escalates perfectly, if a little painfully for Laurie. It is an all-time classic. Do you know, it's funny. From some angles, it looks like 22... Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.